like that. Om Jnana Timirandasya, Jnana Shalakaya, Chakoram Militam Jaina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Yeah. You can hear all right, Maharaj, we can can we hear can you? We hear you? I can hear you loud and clear. Is it still buzzing? It is still buzzing, yeah. It is still buzzing, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so please continue, Devashish. We will try to solve it. Namo Mahabada Naya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Tvise Namaha Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhye Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Bhattaram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Bhakta Shakti Kam. Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindavaneshari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Gadadha Sivasari Sri Gaur Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, am welcome still, everyone. Am I still buzzing? No. Okay. Crystal one. clear. Crystal okay. clear. Cool. Anyhow, we want you our microphone so much today we will listen to Devashish Prabhu's microphones because as he pointed out he's been away for a long long time so he has a lot of catching up to do. Devashish Prabhu, you've given us the title for, for today and uh, with the title for today form or substance and with you can maybe weave into that some of your recent um, news because it is the London Zoom we're all happy to hear yes well um, as you know I've been um, most recently in Mexico and before that in the USA uh, in SoCal for our uh, the what's become now an annual Govinda Mela which was very nice I have to say many devotees came from uh, all over America, all over the world, and uh, our uh, um, Krishna Kanta Didi and Manindra Mohan Prabhu, they were both there, and uh, uh, other devotees from the UK, Sarasati Didi was there, and uh, uh, Ajay Krishna Prabhu and Ratnavali, they were there, and um, yeah, it was it was very nice indeed, and. Uh, got plenty of opportunity to discuss pastimes of Gurudev. In fact, the whole spirit was in the glorification of Srila Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj. And uh, everyone, I think, was very nourished and, and felt very good um, to have the opportunity for that association with devotees new and old and uh, um uh, yeah, it was very nice. And then, then after that, uh, uh, I went with Janard and Marge to, um, first of all, to Guadalajara, where they have a center in Guadalajara, which is, um, it's not very nice. And um, they, just a, a year ago, they had the um, deities installed there. And uh, you see Guru Goranga, uh Radha, Govinda, Sundarjiya, I believe. Anyhow, um, so we stayed there a few days, and then we went from there to Tikul, where um, Bhakti Kusham Ashram Maharaj has a center there, and they were installing deities there. Um, and it's a very, a very nice, about two acres of land, which were donated to... Ashram Maharaj by um, the the head of the local school, who was very much favourable to to um, our mission, and uh, sadly he died recently, 
Um, and, but uh, before he died, he, he willed this uh, land to Ashamar. Ashamar has been developing it for some time. There, originally, there was no um, no buildings there at all, just land, just uh, two acres of land off the, off the um, highway. And uh, with the devotees, they've built, actually built quite a substantial property there with two floors and a uh, room for accommodation for the devotees and uh, a very nice um, like a temple room, not mandir arrangement, kitchen and places for, for devotees to to stay, a nice um, like a Kushadam hall and um, and you know it's it's in development, it's in development. It's certainly not the final version of it or anything like that but it's a working version and uh and the beautiful deities sri sri guru goranga uh, radha madhava sunda they were installed there on the day before guru Maharaj's disappearance day and a very big um festival uh they they tried to make i'm not sure if they were successful or not but tried to make 108 different preparations to offer to their lordships, and uh, there are photographs of those preparations all over the altar on the on the day of uh, installation, and there were very nice lectures and kirtan, and uh, maybe I, I would say going towards three hundred devotees there from different places, from from uh, Colombia and uh, um, from other parts of Mexico, and. A lot of devotees came from from uh, California, and um, yeah, splendid time was had by all. There was uh, um, most of the visitors. We stayed in a hotel in the nearby town, but um, but they were still working on some guest rooms when we arrived. So for the first three or four days, I stayed in the hotel, and then on. The day after that, Ashram Maharaj said, oh, I, we've got a room for you now at the ashram. So um, I moved I moved to the ashram. And a very nice, small, simple, but, but very comfortable room with air conditioning, which is was really necessary for, for me because it was so hot there. I can't tell you how hot it was. I know it's been hot here in the UK the last few days, and I think also similar temperatures in Italy. I've, I've seen, but over there was in the, like 40 degrees and uh, and above, and not just hot, but humid, so humid that, um, you know, you just felt like you were melting most of the time, so. Um, but uh, but uh, uh, other than that, the uh, the festival was really wonderful. The devotees were very sweet and very um, very nice devotees, simple-hearted Vaishnavas, like you can say, you know, and they're all very eager for for the service of Mahaprabhu and uh, for the of the new deities that have been installed there. The the when we left, the festival was still going on. As I was myself was there, and uh, Ashram Marge and um, Chanaran Marge and uh, Puri Marge, Bhakti Bandhava Puri Maharaj was also there, and. Uh, uh, yeah, many and many of the senior devotees from from the Mexican mission, Madhu Chandandiri and uh, Jai Balai Prabhu and Jagannath Swami Prabhu and others. So, yeah, it was very, it was a very good. Uh, I was very happy to have been invited for that, um, and uh, maybe I'll return there again sometime. I don't know, but uh, but um, yes, it was a very a very happy festival. Very. Um, very much in the mood of Srila Gurudev also there. So, uh, so yes, now I'm returned and uh, suffering a little bit from jet lag. It's, I find it a bit difficult to adjust to the time difference, find myself awake in the middle of the night and falling asleep in the middle of the day. <laughs> so if I fall asleep during the, uh, during the program tonight, please forgive me. You'll understand why. <laughs> I'll try not to. But yeah, so the um, the title of today's uh, um, meeting is form or substance, and this is this is a uh, one of those reoccurring themes in the teachings of Srila Guru Maharaj. He's always speaking about 
these two things, form and substance. And and in my experience, I, I see that, uh, that many people have difficulty in distinguishing what is the what is form and what is substance. So, to be clear, form is the outward, um, the outward appearance of things or the outward arrangement of things, and substance is the actual part of uh, of what what we're trying to achieve or what we're trying to um, connect with, which is the which is the plane of reality. And that, of course, is the substance, and not so much, you know, the institution or the dress or the photos on the wall or the, you know, or the which flag you're waving or what what badge you've got on your hat or, you know, all these things are secondary. And uh, and of course, the substance is couched in the form. We can we try to present. We have to present the substance in some kind of form because we live in the world of form so but uh but Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he often would say I'm a form breaker not a form maker and that means that uh, that when the two come to clash when the when the relative and the absolute come to clash when the form and the substance come to clash we always should give preference to the substance and we shouldn't think that uh that uh, the form can actually give us Krishna consciousness. The form is only to help us, to guide us, to to point us in the right direction. Even our society, just being a member of our society, won't make you Krishna conscious. Won't give you Krishna consciousness. You you have to find. You have to go deeper than that. You have to look deeper than that. And and uh, this is. Something that Srila Guru Maharaj spoke about many times, and it is, and it is for everyone difficult to to distinguish one from the other, um, because we we deal with uh, spiritual themes all of the time, but to distinguish what is the form and what is the substance isn't always so clear. Anyway, I've chosen um, a, a, a talk. Or part of a talk by Srila Sridhar Maharaj, which maybe gives some idea about this, but it is something that you know it, it's uh, true and relevant on every level, and and with everything, um, trying to distinguish what is the form and what is the substance. So this actually the uh, the title of this um, talk is called "Distinguishing Form and Substance." And it's Srila Sridhar Maharaj speaking, so um, I'm going to read that. So a devotee asks Guru Maharaj this question. Maharaj, I have a question. I have heard two things. One, that Vaishnav Sanyas is the devotional line. And I have also heard that it is a formality of Varnashram Dharma. What is it really? So this is Guru Maharaj's reply. The outer touch of Sanyas is within the Varnashram Dharma, the socio-religious system, but it also has its positive side. Both negative and positive sides are to be considered. Danda means punishment, as well as staff. The three dandas represent thought, word, and deed. On the negative side, the three dandas of the symbolic triple staff, or tree danda, that the Vaishnava sannyasis except indicate that he should not that he should not use his thought word and deed for any mundane or exploitative aim and object but the positive side is that he will punish his thought word and deed to engage them in the service of krishna narayan then the function becomes vaishnavism those who do not believe in the positive side of life may accept sannyas only as abstinence from using their thought, word, and deed for any mundane purpose. They will prefer mona or silence. But the Vaishnava sannyasi will prefer Krishna Kirtan, singing the glories of the Lord. They have the positive side. So to check these three aspects of life, 
from mingling with the incidents of this mundane world is only one side. But the other side is to use them for the spiritual object. This is Vaishnava Sanyas. And devotees ask further, Does, doesn't a brahmachari or grihasta also utilize his thought, word, and deed for spiritual objective? Guru Maharaj's reply, of course, but the renounced order or order of sannyas is a special emblem, a reminder. It doesn't follow that one who has not taken sannyas will not engage his faculties in spiritual service. A grihasta paramahamsa, who is a parshad bhakta, associate servitor, is also possible without sannyas. He may not necessarily have a sacred thread either. The necessity is only to remind us of that life. That is healthy. The sacred thread, the red cloth, the danda, they always caution us. Think that you have dedicated your life for the spiritual objective. You are meant only for this. So be alert. Don't misuse your red cloth, your sacred thread, the Tulsi Mala, etc. They will remind us always. They have their utility. A Siddha Mahatma or perfect, perfected great soul may not have red cloth. Sanatana Goswami and others were ordinary, wore ordinary white cloth. They accepted the minimum necessity of garments. No red cloth, no danda, no sacred thread. Pure life is possible without these things. But for the beginners, these things will be helpful. So they are introduced into the society of the Vaishnava school in the lower plane. And sometimes the higher also come to accept these lower emblems. As for example, Mahaprabhu took sannyas. Such an emblem or the dress of a world acharya is also there to help the public to give proper respect to the wearer. If he is in ordinary dress, the people won't show any respect or give any attention to his words and teachings. If a policeman or a soldier is in his uniform, people will show some respect to the police or the military. But the military man or policeman may patrol in plain dress and also do even higher service. Still, the uniform is necessary to regulate the society. So this is something like a uniform. The society should learn to take them as the teachers, the holy men, and feel we should deal with them very gently for our future benefit. The society will also reap that benefit, and that holy man will also gain some instruction. Oh, I should not mix with anyone and everyone. It should be seen that my practices keep up the standard, the model of the teachers. Otherwise, independent of such symbols, a man can culture his spiritual life without taking the role of a brahmachari, grihasta, vanaprasta, or sannyasi. Internally, he can improve his heart. Then devotee says, Maharaj, how does one understand or deal with the fall down of a sannyasi or brahmachari? What is the correct understanding? Guru Maharaj's reply. Generally, we shall take it that there was some offense for which he could not keep the standard of life that was expected of him by his Guru Maharaj. That should be the general way of thinking about them. Some previous offense is taking its course and not allowing him to go on smoothly in the way of his realization. It suddenly appeared and checked him. In, particularly, in particular cases, it may be Vaishnava Aparad or offense against the Vaishnava. And sometimes, in general cases, previous bad karma may have come and stood in the way of his progress. We must always be cautious with our free choice. A minor requires the vigilant eye of the major guardian. In our immature stage, our free will is surrounded by many deviations. Thus, in our lower stage, 
It will be safe to constantly, to be constantly under the guidance of a bona fide guardian until we attain promotion in the major stage. This is necessary. Then the devotee says, So Guru Maharaj, if one has initiation and his karma has been removed, how is it possible for his previous karma to check him? Guru Maharaj's reply, Do you think that by initiation all karma is finished at once? This is not claimed anywhere. The disciples are given a chance admission. When a doctor has accepted a patient, it does not mean that he is immediately cured. He must follow the direction of the doctor, take proper diet and medicine. Then he may expect that he will be cured shortly. To call the doctor and have his prescription doesn't mean that the patient is fully cured. This is not a practical thinking. Why hover in the theoretical imaginary world? Zavoti says, oh, I was told in a religious mission that I joined that as the, at the time of initiation, all previous karma is taken away. It's not like that? Burmaj. Such a statement is only meant in the context that when you have called for a good doctor and accepted his treatment, your cure is guaranteed. Otherwise, we see that so many veterans are going down. If the guru is so great as to be able to create a great revolution in the world, and he has given mantra to the disciples he has accepted, yet many of them are falling back. Why? The initiation is a recommendation. It means not. It doesn't mean that it's recommended to be initiated. It means that the initiation itself is a recommendation of this person to Krishna. It's not final. Cure is guaranteed under the treatment of a good doctor. But if a patient, if as a patient you don't care to accept the guidance and secretly indulge in an evil diet, of what value is your doctor? When you have a good doctor, your cure is almost guaranteed. But you have to follow him. And also, it is possible that you are becoming a little ill and your doctor comes to know that. My patient has taken this bad diet or he did not use my medicine. Then the doctor will again take up the case more seriously and he will cure you. We may receive such help from the guru and Vaishnava, but our free choice is never snatched away. Until and unless we find in our heart a real taste for the truth, we are not safe. First, over the surface, spiritual life begins with Shraddha, faith, and underground with Sukriti or special merit. Next is Sadhu Sangha, our company with the Sadhu. Within that is our surrender to Guru. Then Bhajan, our serving life in various forms, such as Shravan, Kirtan, Prashad Seva, or hearing, chanting, respecting the Lord's remnants, etc., begins. Then Anarta Nibriti, our attraction for objects other than Krishna, objects other than God, diminishes. Then Nishta, continued attempt for the service and not for otherwise. Then Ruchi, taste will be created. Real taste for the truth will be created. That is awakened in our heart. We are safe then, but not before that. When spontaneous taste for the truth is awakened within us, we are safe. We can make fair progress from that time. Prior to that, we must remain under the guardian. Taste will take me. I have acquired the taste of sweetness, so automatically I shall run towards that which is very sweet. Until and unless we find that the truth is sweet, 
that Krishna is sweet, we are not safe in our approach towards him. So many distractions may take us hither and thither. Devotee says, Maharaj, is the Guru also under the law of karma? Guru Maharaj, he is not under the law of karma. Guru, as I have mentioned before, from the examples of the sadhus and scriptures, is generally of three kinds. One comes from Vaikuntha, or the land of wholesale truth. He comes here as an agent to take souls up. Another guru has one step here and one step there, and he carries persons from here to there. And the last type of guru has two feet here, but his eyes are fixed there, and he takes persons along with him to that place, or that plane, sorry, to that plane. Okay, so that is my little um, contribution for this evening. And uh, hopefully uh, all technical uh, problems are resolved. And um, over to you, Srila Madhusudan Maharaj. Jai Shri Padeva Shri Prabhu Ki Jai and the reading from Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. And of course, Srila Guru Rev Ki Jai and all our Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Vaga Ki Jai. So yes, Devashish were very, very substantial and to, of course to the point, the point of form and substance. Form and form or substance, yes. And also, I mean, my thought is also, first of all, there's an example similar to you was mentioning about, or Srila Guru Maharaj was mentioning about the uniform. A soldier wearing a uniform, everyone takes care, etc. And Srila Gurudev, he gave that example about wearing the devotee's uniform, wearing dhoti, kota, tilak, etc. And he gave the example that in Dalhousie Square, BBD Bagh in Calcutta, very famous for most of us who've been there, the technical center of Calcutta, where the GPO, the general post office is, and there in Dalhousie Square, in the wartime, there was just a large picture of the, the soldier's uniform. And it's wear this uniform, it will tell you the rest. So similarly, this idea that we have some form, and it's not that Srila Gurudev and Srila Guru Maharaj neglected how the devotees ap uh, appear and dress and how they behave. Rather, you know, we are in Vidhi Marg, but we've got our eye to the Raga Marg plane, and when necessary, when we've got some service which takes us into that Raga Marg savor of serving the Ragamag gurus, means Guru Dev and Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, then otherwise, you know, we are engaged in Vidhi and we've got the form of the day's program. We've got the form of the uniform to wear. And we've, we know from Srila Guru Dev, we know from Srila Guru Maharaj what they expect from devotees. So we don't throw out everything and just turn up with jeans, t-shirts and a cigarette behind the ear, don't come and, and be in front of the deities for the arati. We come in a clean, respect, respectable way and wearing the uniform. And this way, they've given us a very uh, liberal, but liberal, but not without the proper etiquette. And so the standard that, the standard that Gurudev gave in particular for us, we were with him for so many years and we can say the standard that Gurudev gave is representative of what should, we should all be doing. So, to have a temple, to have an ashram, to have a place where devotees can come and live their life as is in Nabadeep with the kind of form of the <coughs> programs that Srila Guru Maharaj established. And Srila Guru Maharaj established following Srila Sarasati Thakur. Srila Gurudev, we know very well, maintained what Srila Guru Maharaj established. So this way, we do have form, but that form carries the substance. But at the same time, we also, and we read recently, I was looking for the, the, uh, what it was we read recently, but we can be following Vidhi, in Vidhi Mark, for unlimited time, 
without getting entrance to Radha and Krishna's the fine, fine, topmost pastimes. We, uh, we are engaged in Vidhi Mark, we're engaged in our kind of Vidhi, which means what Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev expect of us and want of us, so we may just satisfy them. We know it satisfies them. They want us to do these things. And to get into, to get entrance within the highest plane, that comes by the mercy of a, a resident of there, the mercy of the devotees who reside there. And when they will see that we are following nicely, the, what we're expected to follow by our masters, the form that's been given to us, then that will draw their grace. So we are in, engaged in vidhi in the sense that we are following what Gurudev gave, what Guru Maharaj gave, and not that we are going to study minutely the scriptures which give us all the mantras to chant when we wake up, how many times to do this, that, which direction, etc. We see Gurudev didn't adhere to that, but he did adhere, get up, have a bath, put on fresh cloth, come to the chant Gayatri and come to the temple. So we have our generous allowance of the Vidhi, but it is form. It is the form of the devotional life. And really we see when devotees are having difficulty, they've left the, the form you know, like long, long ago or far behind or follow the form one day a week or on a festival day. And this way, we've been given a nourishing program to protect, to nourish us and protect us from the, the uh, illusory environment and from being attracted by all the mundane things in the world. And so this way, these are my form. It's not so much form or substance, but we want to have the substantial form, if you like. And that substantial form is given to us by our masters and not that we read the books and find the things which you know, we, want, we want to do ourselves. We are attracted to, to chant in a particular uh, you know, sections that haven't been, sections of Bhag Srimad Bhagavatam or scripture, which have not been given as a, as a daily routine by Gurudev and Guru Maharaj. But form and etiquette, the etiquette also comes within form. And we have the, the standard for deity worship. We have the standard for being in the holy dharm. We have the standard of being with devotees. We have the standard for honoring prasadam also. And in Nabadi, no, no one will, will be served prasadam if they come wearing a gumcha. And actually, if they come wearing jeans, okay, once maybe, but not tomorrow. There'll be no. You must honor prasadam. We're coming to honor prasadam, and it reminds us too: it's not food. Prasadam is not food. We're going to eat, get our calories, our vitamins, and everything else. We're going to honor the prasadam, the remnants of the Lord. And so, you no, know, this way there was definitely form in Navadi, but form for a purpose to always remind us of the, of the Vaishnava etiquette and why, what form the morning program takes, that also, and the evening, well, all the programs, but what form those uh, programs take, they're for our nourishment and also for our protection, in the sense that both morning and evening, there is Parakrama, and at the last part, like the standing part, morning and evening is the obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. So we give obeisances in the morning and in the evening we also give obeisances and any, any, any uh, error, any mistake we've made in the day with any Vaishnavas, knowingly or unknowingly, then it's showing our respect to the Vaishnavas. And this way to be protected from Vaishnava Aparad also. So we've got our We've got our healthy diet, and as Devashish pointed out in the reading, or Srila Guru Maharaj pointed out in Devashish was reading, we've been given the medicine by Mahaprabhu, the medicine by our Guru Vaga, but we've also been given the way to take that medicine. 
and we must mention Trinada pi suni chena taroriva sehishnuna amanena manadena kitani asara harihi. This sloka which Srila Gurudev constantly stressed. But we are reading Guru Maharaj, we are reading Srila Prabhupada, we are finding them also stressing this humility, tolerance, and giving honor to others again and again. So this is also within form, if you like some guidance for us. And we need to mold our mind with our intelligence guiding the mind and our intelligence being molded by the directions of our masters. Hare Krishna. And Munindra Mohan Prabhu said, yes, we'll have the London Zoom in the temple room and he's come with something in his pocket to share. I have a microphone to share with Munindra Mohan Prabhu. Munindra Mohan, keeping you to your word. Dandavat, all the Vaishnavas. Well, this theme is very important because uh, if we practice too much formally in all our life, it's a waste of time, really. We have to always to contact the substance and check if the if the substance is there. We cannot cheat Yamaraj in the end. Huh? Chitragupta, who is the counter of the Chitra? The scribe, the chief scribe I, is Chitragupta. I've been a very good boy your life. But Chitragupta doesn't take, doesn't carry. We, we need substance. When we leave the body, what we have is the substance, not the form. But some form, as Maharaj told very nicely, is necessary and our criteria how much form we can take is the satisfaction of Srila Gurudev. Why why we wear this dhoti is not very fashionable in Italy. <laughs> it's not that, that the girls are running after you if you go in the street. It's you know looking funny, but we know Gurudev like the devotional clothes. So in the temple, definitely we wear the devotional cloth. And sometimes we go in Harinam with the devotional cloth. Sometimes we even go to the bank. And uh, if, you, if we wear the devotional cloth, then definitely we have to behave and have some invitation in the pocket. And so some formality is nice, some dignity of the, of the mission we must preserve in, in uh, in in uh, honor of our great 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 spiritual masters, we don't want to uh, give bad impression as followers as students. So we must reflect some dignity. And uh, yeah, there's many story. I uh, always the the border. Where is the border between form formality and uh, the and all the Krishna lila? There is no formality, you know. And go the the gopi. And uh, we should uh, take the expertise of the gopi in uh, on our head. And there's no formality in the gopi bab at all. But we see that uh, Mahaprabhu shows some some behavior in his lila, and maybe when he went to Gaya before it was a. Uh, dignified teacher, everybody respect him, and then after Gaya become mad for Krishna Prema, and people lose some respect, lost some, some respect. So Mahaprabhu had to take sannyas to fix it, because he doesn't want the conditioner so go through apparat and, and instead of being saved, they will be conduct. So Mahaprabhu definitely fall, follow some etiquette, some Vedic uh, uh, re rules and regulations. But beside him, there is Nityananda who he definitely didn't follow any <laughs> formal, <laughs> any formality. And, but Mahaprabhu told, even if you see Nityananda Prabhu with a mlecha prostitute and uh, in one hand and then bottle of wine in the other hand. You don't think he's engaging in mundane things. So always be careful to judge 
Vaishnava when they are not behaving, behaving, behaving in a perfect formal way. We also have Avadut in our Guru Parampara, we have uh, Shila Gorakishora, and we have recently we celebrate Vansidas Babaji, pure Vaishnava, not following any external etiquette. So again, we have to uh, see with the eyes of the Vaishnavas, who is, uh, is uh, Vaishnava, uh, is Vaishnava anyway. If it's uh, following some formality or not following some formality, it must be a Vaishnava. If the if a superior Vaishnava is saying this is a Vaishnava. But I heard co correct me if I remember wrong, Maharaj, uh little uh, his story, uh, Guru Maharaj um has some guests, some Vaishnava guests, not even so senior, but they need to leave and they need to take prashana because they have to take some public transport or maybe some flight. But the pujari was uh, still uh, doing puja and he said, it's, it's not finished, the, the, the puja. The then Guru Maharaj took some flour, offered on the altar, and then puja finished. Now you feed the vajra. <laughs> Have you heard this story? You confirm? Uh, no, I can't confirm that about the flowers, but also what is the wish of the spiritual master and the pure devotee? That will that will be paramount. So Guru Maharaj, he had that capacity to do this. Exactly. And he did do one or two things like that, but that's Guru Maharaj and Guru Dev similarly. But when we hear these things, it's not, you know, it's, we don't the tendency of the world is if they hear some exception and then that becomes the rule. <laughs> no, this I is think, not my... Anybody intention. heard this about chanting four rounds as the minimum? <laughs> my intention is just on the line. How Guru Maharaj that he was very strict follower of something. In, oh, yes, in this yeah. regard, in this regard uh, the service of Vaishnava was a superior necessity in this specific situation. And another time when Krishna Kanta was very sick, uh, she was in the hospital, and Gurudev uh, wrote a letter to her and uh, relieved her of the necessity to follow Vedic restriction. means if they serve you meat and you are in the hospital and it's life uh, threat and for you, you must don't take, don't care any restriction of that. And, but Krishna Kanta didn't take him to put smash potatoes for 15 days <laughs> instead of taking meat. But Gurudev uh, released her uh, on Vedic restriction. So in some cases, life <laughs> cases is uh, necessary. Anyway, we are, uh, as Maharaj told, we follow Vidi Marga uh, with uh, an eye to uh, Raga Marga, I mean, with Raga Marga on our head and our beautiful shloka on the entrance of the uh, Saraswat Mat. Explain everything how to harmonize Puja La Raga Pata Gura Vapange Matala Harijana Kirtan Rangge. So, I give my microphone to someone else, Maharaj, who... Oh, Chinmoy Dev, who is here, and he's continually hearing and focused on Srila Gurudev and Guru Maharaj with hearing their message and putting subtitles to videos on the Srila Govinda Maharaj video channel and on the Srila Guru Maharaj video channel on YouTube. So he can share something. Just before he mentions, I just like to say that the standard, by the way, of the cloth we wear and many things we do, it was set by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. He set the standard in the modern age just as he woke up or purified, showed the clean line of what is Krishna consciousness. And he gave the style of cloth that we wear 
and many of the things which we see in Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Mat followed there, that is from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. And Srila Guru Maharaj greatly objected and uh, to one of the you know one of the main temp principal temples of Srila Sarasati Thakur. The leader of that temple, after Srila Sarasati Thakur disappeared, after a little while, he changed the, the style of the cloth so that the brahmacharis were wearing cloth which the sannyasis would be wearing. And Guru Maharaj gave much objection to that. And when they didn't change, Guru Maharaj told, we won't go to that temple. That after Srila Sarasati Thakur disappeared and then they're changing the standard, this is not acceptable. So, Srila Sarasati Thakur, he's our grand master for everything. There's a reason why he's given a, a uniform and a standard and we will try to follow that and not try to invent other things along the way. So just a thought when Munindra Mohan Prabhu mentioned about the cloth. Yes, Chaitanya. Um, Chin Moy Dev. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everyone. Uh, it, what uh, Munindra Mohan Prabhu was saying reminded me something of what I heard Guru uh, Srila Govinda Maharaj tell the story. And it is, it's about this difference between form and substance, but how we can actually tell what is form and what is, sub, is substance. So there was one disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, Saraswati Thakur, called Saram Prabhu, and they were in Puri, and Saraswati Thakur was going to give it a class. And Saram Prabhu, he, he said to Saraswati Thakur, oh, I'd like to go see Lord, have the darshan of Lord Jagannath, uh, it was just about Artik time, and Srila Saraswati Thakur didn't say anything. Maybe did the Bengali head nod thing, but he didn't really say anything. So Saran Prabhu, he went to the Artik of Lord Jagannath, and how wonderful is that? How great is that to have the darshan of Lord Jagannath? What could be more spiritual? What could be more devotional than going to see Lord Jagannath? And then when he came back, Sri Saraswati Thakur was still giving class, still speaking. He stopped his class and he said to Saran Prabhu, have you finished your eye exercise? <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what really is substance? The substance for Sri Saraswati Thakur is to hear from your guru. You are in front of your guru. Your guru is going to give, going to give Krishna Kata and you are going somewhere else to please your eyes and as one can say, because obviously, I mean, unless you are a very pure devotee of the Lord, you are not really seeing what Mahaprabhu is seeing when he goes before Lord Jagannath. So in that sense, like, what is form? What is substance? Our guides, our spiritual masters, they are giving us that instruction. Because something may have substance, but what is more substantial? And it's here, Shri Saraswati Thakur, you were leaving me. You were leaving your uh, your your spiritual master uh, to go see Lord Jagannath, but that is not correct. Your spiritual master is giving Krishna Kata. You will sit there. You will listen to him. But another occasion. So once again, this is the difficulty sometimes to know between form and substance, or what has substance, but what is more substantial. Um, I was in Navadi, and Shiva Govinda Maharaj was going to. Uh, Russia soon. So I came to him and I said, Oh, uh, Shri Govinda Maharaj or Shri Gurudev, um, I'd like to go to Russia with you. And Gurudev, he said, What will you do there? <laughs> and so then immediately I was like, Yeah, what will I do there? <laughs> I had service in Calcutta, I had service in Navadip. What will I do once again? You know, what is, the, what is the real substance? It's my service life. That's my connection to Guru. And just to travel with him, to go see him, what is the real substance there? So, you know, all these things, they, they kind of instruct us and teach us, like, we have to really understand what's the, the, the actual, real, transcendental, divine substance that we're searching for and where we can find it. And that can come through the help, through, through the mercy of our, our guides, of uh, the Guru Varga and the, the Vaishnavas. And fortunately, we have those here with us, so we can always be instructed 
informed to, to keep on the right path towards the substance. Jive. Jai. Yes, does anybody have a question for Devashish Prabhu? <laughs> Question, comment, life experience. Uh, Dhanavad, just maybe if Devashish Prabhu could share some example with us from his own life, like disting distinguishing form from substance, maybe Gurudev for Guru Maharaj told something, was it funny or not? Maybe <laughs> a lesson of life. I don't know if I'm even able to do to distinguish what is form and substance but uh, similar th things when when um, when I was in staying in Navadri for some time and at that time there was uh, I, I believe it still belongs to the mot there was a, a, a some land where they would cultivate vegetables there. And um, sometimes the devotees would stay there. Like two, three, four devotees would stay there. And uh, we knew it uh, as the land of nectar, we, it was called, um, by the devotees. But um, it was actually number two Goranga colony. But uh, uh, so the... And usually, Bhakti Ananda Sagamaraj, he would stay there. Where there was one disciple and, you know, maybe a few friends would stay there. He had a little, some rooms there. So anyway, he was, a, he was away in Germany publishing um, the Gita, I think it was, at the time. And so no one there. And so Guru Maharaj asked me to go and stay there. And... Uh, I went I went there, but there's nothing much to do there, you know, at all. So I would just stay there. And uh, and also I got very sick while I was there. I got a mild form of malaria, which they, they locally call seven day fever. And I had that and I you know, for like seven days I couldn't eat anything, I couldn't I couldn't do anything, just lie on the bed and and uh I remember I was so weak that I remember there was this huge spider in the in the room where I was staying. White. It was a white spider. And I thought it looked pretty deadly if it were to bite you. You know, I don't know. I don't know no expert on spiders, but I was so weak I just thought, yeah, okay, if it bites you <laughs> nothing I can do about it. And I and I, all the only thing I could eat was some, some whey. The um, Dial Nittai, who was a brahmachari, stayed there with me. He used to make paneer, and from the paneer, there's the whey, and I could drink that. That with some lemon juice, that's all I could, and salt, that's all I could take, nothing else. And anyway, after about seven days, then I got better. And, uh, and so one morning, uh, after the uh, workers come, they come to you know, to um, cultivate the land and like that. And then, you know, I had sort of free time. So I uh, decided, oh, okay, I'm feeling a little stronger now. I'm going to take a walk up to the mot and uh, and go and see Guru Maharaj. So, so and, I, and remember, I'd, I'd not, I'd been out of action for the best part of, of a week. So anyway, I went up there and, uh, and um, went through the gate and asked somebody, is Guru Maharaj sitting? And he said, yeah. He said, yeah. So I went upstairs and I bowed down and Guru Maharaj said, who is, who's there? And I said, oh, it's Devashish. And he said, oh, didn't I give you some service at the, at, down at the land, at that land? I said, yes, Maharaj, but uh, I wanted to come and have your darshan. And he said, Oh, so you've come for eye exercise, is it? And I said, no, no Marge, not for eye exercise. I came, I wanted to see you and hear some Hari Kata from you. And then he started laughing. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Of course. So, 
he used that same phrase on me. Oh, you came for your eye exercise. And he, you know, although it was down at the, uh, down at the land, there, there was nothing for me to do there at all. You know, just read a book, chant Hare Krishna. And uh, there was uh, um, the, I think Guru Maharaj felt, you know, like safe because sometimes some dacoits might come or something and steal things from there, steal the crops. They used to do that sometimes. But what what um, I would have been able to do, I don't know. It was like twenty year up, twenty one year old boy, barely out of my teens. If any dacoits came there, I'd probably be the first to run for for it. But uh, but anyhow, so Guru Maharaj gave me that service. And a similar thing happened with Srila Gurudev once when I was I was um staying in Navadweep with him and uh and no there weren't any other devotees there. Maybe Madhusudan Maharaj was there, but there was like well, only one or two Western devotees. So I was sitting one morning with Gurudev and he said So Prabhu, your service today, your only service is just to be here with me. I said, yes, Gurudev, okay, so I'm sitting there and, you know, he's meeting people and I'm there and everything's fine, you know, then in the afternoon after Prashadam, Gurudev goes to, goes to take a, a nap. So then I'm just sitting there, you know, nothing, and, uh, and nothing to do. So I thought, oh, I'm, I'll go for a walk. And so I got up and I went for a walk. I went around Govinda Kund and then I came back. And when I came back, Gurudev was up. And he's sitting in his, and he said, oh, where did you go? And I said, oh, I, I just went for a walk. I was feeling a bit bored. And he said, well, I told you your service was just to be here today. You failed, Prabhu. You failed in your service. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, he also he also laughed at me then. And uh, so, you know, I, uh, what do I mean by all that? I just that um, the order of our guru is more, than uh, than anything else, uh, that, you know, when it when it actually connects us with reality. And uh, as uh, Chinmoy Guru was saying, you know, like the devotee went to have darshan of Jagannath, or I think there's a similar um, a occasion when they were in Brindavan, and their a group of devotees went to see the deity of Padmanabha Swami, and uh, and Sahaji Thakur was giving a lecture at the same time. Most of the devotees went there, and he remarked, "Oh, they've gone for eye exercise." But uh, <coughs> but what we learn in, is in as much as how that relates to form and substance is that Sarasu Thakur very often he would say, "Darshan is through the ear, not through the eye." So if we go to the temple, we see the deity, we do whatever we do. Whatever we observe through our eye, that will what will that be? Actually, you know, Srila Guru Maharaj would sometimes say, "What will you see with your flesh eye?" So, and even he said, some even sometimes there the devotees there bypassing the the deity without even stopping to make their obeisance to the deity, they're going directly to the feet of Gurudev to hear from him. And so this is where we get our proper angle of vision by hearing, by hearing, not by what we see, because what we see will not always be um, true. You know, we, what we see will be going through a particular filter. But to get that proper vision of the deity or of reality, that's through the ear, not through the eye. So this is a this is a very important point as uh, distinguishing form and substance. So, in other words, Guru Maharaj is saying, like, what will you see um, with with your senses? I mean, that's of course is true about the ear also. But through the ear, we can hear, we can give a submission, submissive reception to the uh, to the divine message of the saints. And that therefore we can use use that faculty in the right way. So it isn't it isn't that seeing the deity isn't a holy thing, but but 
in comparison with hearing from the sadhu, that's the more important thing. As Guru Maharaj asked the devotee when he went to the Alta Dunga road, he asked, oh, why, if your guru is, uh, if, if the deity is Krishna, God, then why is not your guru not living here with the deity? And why are all the devotees upstairs with him? And, uh, and the, that devotee's reply was, because, yes, the, the Krishna is present in the form of the deity, but we consider that he's more present in the heart of the devotee. So our, our best um, benefit will be by getting the association of the real devotee and hearing from them. Uh, anyway, the, our time has run away from us again. So I'm, I'm not sure if any of that's really relevant, but um, but uh, just something that came uh, came to me now regarding that. Yes, living examples definitely appreciated, Devishir. Yes, Marsh, thank you. So here we are. Uh, I think it's time to draw things to a close. Yes. You're the MC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with our obeisances to our to our divine masters, Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Sundar, Govinda Dev, Roshami Maharaj, Kijai. Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Rakak, Sri Dev, Roshami Maharaj, Kijai. Om Vishnu Pad, Bhagavan, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Sarasati Thakur, Kijai. Rupanuga Guru Bhagya, Kijai. Sri Chaitanya Sarasaka Acharya Brinda Kijai, Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj Kijai, all the assembled devotees Kijai, all the world devotees Kijai, um, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Kijai, Nitai Gaura Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo, and with obeisances from all us over here to all of you over there in London and wherever you may be. And thank you, of course, big appreciation to our translators and to Odaram Prabhu for helping look after everything on the Zoom and to all of the devotees from far and wide. Our repeated obeisances. Jai Shil Gurudev, Jai Shil Guru Maharaj. Stay safe, chant Hare Krishna, be happy with form and, sorry, with substance <laughs> and with form as appropriate. Uh, Hare Krishna. Itai Gaur Premanan. Hare Hare. Amra Ashti.